it was a competition. So it, it probably didn't bring out, always bring out the best aspects of myself. Happy New Year, everybody. What's going on? Happy New Year. I'm so sorry I'm late. I was having a little bit of technical difficulties, but a bitch is here. Did you guys enjoy that Jenna video this morning I put up on YouTube? Did it, it air this morning? Yes. You know, I'm never playing with y'all again. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own personal Instagram account. Outside of the He Is All Betwixt account. So I, when I don't want to see y'all and get bothered by y'all, I can just ignore y'all. I've never been so bothered a day in my life. Yes, purr, purr, purr. I was just like, girl, what? It's Christmas. I want to I wanna eat gingerbread cookies with my family too. Anyways, guys, I'm so grateful for you guys to be here. This is our first two exclusive a and chat of the year. And we're talking to one of the most loved contestants of course, we know she won cycle 13. We're talking to Nicole, the petite cycle of top model. I'm so excited to talk to her today about this cycle, especially since we've already spoken to Sunday, Laura, and Jen on that joint chat we did a couple of weeks ago. So I know a lot of you like me have questions about that chat as well as questions from her just about cycle 13. So before I bring her on, I want us to get serious right fast. Um, to make a very long story short, Nicole's cat right now is currently in need of a surgery, um, in need of a medical assistance. Nicole has posted on her YouTube, not her YouTube, her Instagram page, a GoFundMe for her cat. I believe she's less than a thousand dollars short. So as you guys are watching this, please make sure that you follow Nicole and that you click on the link to help little cat. I'm a cat lover. I'm a dog lover. I'm an animal lover. And, um... Let's show her the love that she on top model shows us. And without further ado. How are you? <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm like shaking. I'm so nervous. Why? <laughs> I just, um, I don't know, like, I'm, yeah, I don't know, I, I've never done Instagram Live before. Is this your first time, too? Yeah. So I um, talked to McKee, who won Cycle 11, and it was her yeah. first time. She's like, this is our first time going, I'm like, what are you talking about? This is your first time. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. I'll be all right. <laughs> oh my gosh, Nicole. It is so good to see you in 2021. So wonderful to see you too and get to meet you. I've listened to your music online and um, I was just like really flattered and blown away that you would want to, you know, chat with me. So um, yeah, this is exciting. You listened to my music. What did you listen to? I'm curious to know. Um, I think it was Sugar. Was okay. it called Sugar? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're like, uh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just so curious to know what rabbit hole did you fall down? Because, you know, I can say something. Oh. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that you like sugar. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. It was really, really nice. Great, great work. Thank you. I really. appreciate that. That means a lot coming from you. It means a lot to yeah. me. Um, so like I told you guys, we have Nicole who won the petite cycle of America's Next Top Model, Cycle 13. She is mm -hmm. here right now. Of course, we're going to get into all the questions we have for her about her cycle. And Nicole, I must mention that out of all of the girls that I've ever interviewed, I think I got more questions about your post-top model career than any girl I've interviewed, which I think huh? that speaks a lot to what you've done in your work. Oh, yeah. I mean, I um, am curious what those questions are. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to let you know what they are. Yeah. So listen... 
outside of that, like I told the like I told the girls and girls before I got you on, um, you are currently doing a GoFundMe for your cat. If you could tell yeah. us about it quickly, right? You know, right before we get into it, yeah. you tell the people about it. Well, actually, update, we met our goal. So, oh. um, and that's through a lot of um, top model fan donations, too. So all I have to say is thank you to everyone who um, has helped to support me through this time. And, you know, my cat Lipton, um, he's getting his surgery tomorrow. So he's on the road to recovery pretty soon. So, yeah, pretty oh, that's great. So dope. <laughs> that's so dope. I could I couldn't imagine what that feels like. Because I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm a really. dog owner, and I'm just like, yeah. oh, my dog, yo. So I'm so glad to see that Lipton is going to yeah. get what he Not Lipton, Lipton. I'm thinking about that movie, Lipton, so sorry. <laughs> that Lipton is going to get what he needs. He has many nicknames, variations off of Lipton. Lippers and, you know, whatever rolls off the tongue. Mm -hmm. What's that movie, guys, where I'm like, Lipton, Lipton. What movie am I thinking about right now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going forward until it somebody sounds tells me familiar. It's not the witches, is it? It's not the witches. It's not, is it the witches? Leepshen. My Leepshen. What movie is that, guys? Tell me, please. Like, I'm not going to get off of it. No, we'd rather just leave you hanging and make you say it over and over again. It's just it is the it's too great. Okay, it is the witches. Listen, Nicole, oh. the witches is one of my favorite movies of all time. Have you ever seen the witches? No. When did that come out? He's shocked. <laughs> he needs to recover. <laughs> Nicole, you don't know about the great Angelica Houston in the movie The Witches. Oh, she's fantastic. Witches I do know her. Of England. You are a disgrace. Misery, <laughs> sad witches. <laughs> Who spoke? It was you. <laughs> You dare to defy me? A fully switch. Without your blade. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get lost in it. I love it. <laughs> Nicole, go watch the movie. Okay. I'll okay. add it to my watch list. Yay. So listen, I've taken up enough time. We have a lot of questions to get through about Top Model, Cycle 13. How do you feel about this? It's been so long. I know that was my first thought. I was like, I will do my best to answer these questions accurately, but you know, we're going on like 12 years now. So we'll see. We'll, we shall see. Okay. So I'm just going to jump right into it. So anticlimactic. Oh, we're building suspense. Just, suspense. just yeah. Okay. So Darren Christopher underscore 1996 wants to know, Nicole, tell us, why did you audition for America's Next Top Model? Um, I guess because people had told me, like, hey, you could be a model. And it always felt really great to hear that. It, like, boosted my self-esteem. You know, I was um, young and, you know, kind of, I wanted to be popular and pretty and then when people said that i had stars in my eyes i was like maybe i could actually do this you know so was it your first oh well of course it was your first time auditioning because that was the first time they opened it up for girls who were sure tell us what's your official height i'm five seven like exactly maybe a smidge more by like a millimeter but yeah i'm pretty gotcha. much five seven gotcha Beautiful brown, sorry, beautiful, yeah, I'm assuming brown eyes wants to know. Haha, ha, watching the first episode, not gonna lie, Tyra's dress is beautiful, but what is with that fake accent? LMA, your girl, no. So if, if, if you can remember back when you girls came into, I guess, the first place where um, you girls were meeting the judges and whatnot, Tyra came out with this, like, Parisian accent. Do you remember that moment? <laughs> I do. She's so silly. Yeah, um, that was fantastic. I do remember that. What was the whole audition week like for you? Like getting there, meeting the other girls, meeting the judges, meeting Tyra, going through these little mini challenges. What was that like for you? Um, you know, it was like pretty rigorous for me. I I really wondered like if I could make it on the show um, because I was tended to be quiet and um, like shy on camera. And I really wondered if I could kind of overcome my 
um, nervousness to make it. Mm -hmm. So um, when you, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I mean, I could just go on and on, but go ahead. <laughs> no, tell us some more, tell us some more. So like, you're there, you're meeting Tyra, you're seeing the Jays. Had you watched Top Model before you auditioned? I had. Okay, and cool. um, yeah, when I found out that I was progressing and making it further on the audition path, like I went back and watched episodes um, that I had missed and tried to, you know, find out everything I could about the show. So um but yeah i was pretty anxious <laughs> too. so there's a story that you tell on top model about this bloody eyeball chloe.oe.o <laughs> wants to know hey so excited for this interview can you ask her if the bloody eyeball story nickname was made out of context from editing or what is the full story behind that um oh yeah so what happened is I was actually wearing this necklace. I think I'm wearing it. Right. Yeah, I'm wearing it right now. It's like my favorite necklace. Oh my gosh. I'm so nervous. My hand is shaking. So the camera's like shaking. Why are you <laughs> but, um, nervous, Nicole? <laughs> um, because you guys are just all so um, pretty and amazing people. And, you know, I'm me. <laughs> what do you mean you're you? Um... I, like, am shy, I guess, you know? No, I get it. I think. I have, I have social anxiety. I think that's more accurate. Gotcha. Like, gotcha. I'll, at the end of conversations, I will just, like, go through, you know, everything I said in a conversation and just be like, oh, my God, that was so dumb. Really? <laughs> and it's like, I mean, do you know you're, like, one of the most loved winners of the entire franchise? <laughs> like, do you know that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It well, helps. as long as you know, everyone is help. going, everyone's going bananas right now. They're like, "Oh my god, I can't believe Nicole is here. I love her. Oh my god, oh my god, they're gagging right now." So hopefully, that can calm you out a little bit, Miss Mamas. Thank you. Yeah. So, so the story <laughs> with um the bloody eyeball is I was showing off my necklace, and somebody was like, "Well, what is that necklace?" And I was like, "Oh, it's Mona Lisa's eye." My dad gave it to me because, um, you know, we call each other bloody eyeballs because when I was born, I had literally a bloody eyeball. And so I think it just cut to the end and you didn't get the part about my necklace or my dad. And it just sounded like I was like, I'm bloody eyeball <laughs> out of context. Um, but, but yeah, that's more the context. Gotcha. Um, going on in the show, and a, a little serious question, if you know, um, H. Rizalivar, H. Rizalivar is asking if she knows why did Amber leave the show? Oh, you know, I think we all wondered that. It was, it was never revealed to us. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't have a better answer than that. And I've wondered, you know, I actually followed it up myself to try and find out but um i didn't find anything so mystery remains what was your relationship like with her um she was really nice to me i remember you know her taking me um well not really taking me aside but like in the room when we were doing um some stuff on camera she was like you know are you gonna say something they're gonna cut you you know mm -hmm. and i i felt like that was nice of her to try and include me in the conversation and you know her concern for me and making it on the show so yeah oh that was nice of her yeah. very nice actually that was very dope of her um, totally it appeared you developed a very close bond with bianca bianca who's like one of the more polarizing personalities from psycho 13 this person is asking um is saying and there was a sweet moment when she opened up to you by the pool was there really tension between Bianca and the other girls, how it was shown on television, and what led to you guys becoming so close? Um, well, I, there was some tension, I think. Um, you know, I'm I, trying to remember back, but um, there were some arguments and, you know, some bits of drama and bickering, and... Um, I just am always 
try, the person that tries to like make sure everybody's okay, you mm -hmm. know? So if I feel like one person is like left out or I, I try and like mediate, um, and try and make sure that person's, you know, like not attacked or left out or, you know, sidelined. So um, I remember feeling concerned at the time that that was going to happen and, you know, really respecting that she had a bold and outspoken personality um, and, you know, saw that as, you know, a great thing, but that could be, um, you could make, you know, enemies that way also so i wanted to try and help whatever way i could by just like making sure that i didn't you know disclude her or alienate her you know beautiful um was she as aggressive in presentation as it was shown in the show because like it seemed like she was very um she could be very dry she could be very straight to the point maybe sometimes a little bit insensitive occasionally aggressive that's how it was presented to us. Was that how she really was? Or was there other sides to her or other motivations that caused her to be that way that we probably aren't privy to? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the show kind of played up those harder edges, but she had other moments too. And that was not the whole story. Like she could be very nice. I remember her, um, you know, taking the time to be like, hey, you look good in that outfit. When I was trying to figure out what to wear for a panel and, um, you know, just really like friendly and, um, you know, there were softer sides to her. When was the last time you spoke to her? <laughs> um, Pretty much since the show ended, I think we talked a little bit afterwards, um, but we haven't stayed in contact. Gotcha. Do you guys follow each other on Instagram? Um, I don't. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. Maybe I should change that. Yeah, fans <laughs> that are watching after this live, send everyone. I mean, send send Nicole. Well, not everyone. Send Nicole Bianca's <laughs> Instagram because she's active on Instagram. I would. I like. I believe I went to her page. Yeah, it was her. I went to her page. She's active. You guys could. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, Kara Julia wants to know how did you feel about the dancing challenge with Benny Ninja and the Jabberwockies? <laughs> 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 oh my god that was so much fun <laughs> i loved it like oh boy well i realized that dancing is difficult it was more difficult than i thought it required a lot of like coordination <laughs> Definitely and that's essential. yes and and like remembering choreography which i just like I don't know. I couldn't. I just couldn't. Um, but I felt super great about the ending beat where I like lunged forward and was <laughs> super creepy. Like that was just, that was me. I really feel like that was me. And you did like this <laughs> stare at the people. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching it when I was watching preparing for when I spoke to some of your other cast members. I was like, what is Nicole doing? Who, who, who put her, who told her to do this? Where did that moment come from? You're like, I'm just going to stand right here and stare them down. And you know, I don't, I think it was my idea. It might have been somebody else's, but I just remember I was like, yes, I'm going to do it. Um, wherever the idea came from. Yeah. I felt, I felt strongly about that. <laughs> Kudos to you, Nicole. <laughs> Beautiful brown eyes again wants to know, how did it feel getting criticized for your voice and how you talked, even to the point that Nigel said, you talk like you're stoned? Yeah, that was kind of before being stoned was a cool thing, right? Um, right. So, <laughs> like, of course, now Colorado is legalized and, you know, Do you people like to make jokes. <laughs> You know, honestly, I can't because I used to. There was a time where it was good, but um, every time I smoke now recently, like, I just get really weird. Um, I got to avoid it. I cannot imagine one of America's Next Top Models cutie oh, pies no. <laughs> from the other side, slip and slide, let it rock, uh -huh. placing, a, <laughs> placing a joint in her mouth and smoke. I cannot see that. 
Yeah, I guess. Um, I don't know what to say for myself. <laughs> do you know how? Do you know how to roll it yourself, Nicole, or do you ask somebody else to do it? Oh yeah, rolling it is easy. <laughs> you know, this is. I learned from cigarettes. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god i would pay big money to see this happen it's almost like i don't know like that's like almost like to me michelle obama smoking no michelle obama smokes weed never mind <laughs> yeah she definitely smokes never mind you think she never does mind. on to the next question um vanda cosmetic wants to know hi nicole on the show, we saw you painting a portrait of Ashley, but she was eliminated before you could finish it. Did the two of you ever get a chance after the show to talk and you gave her a finished product? Um, we did talk a little after the show, but I was like super scattered. I felt like my whole world was kind of like turned upside down in good and bad ways. I was like, oh my God, I actually won. What am I gonna do now? So I really, I kind of went through like a creative withdrawal where I was like relocating to New York and LA and I didn't produce a lot of paintings in that time. Um, and so um, we talked a little bit, but I never did finish that painting of her, unfortunately. Oh no. Yeah. I just, I just saw someone down here, Justice D. White. I'm shouting y'all out. I'm um, just said that Ashley makes really cool music now. Send me, send me, send she me does. Her. Does she? Someone send me her stuff. I would love to hear it. Yeah. I would absolutely love to hear it. Um, Benny under okay. So here's a hard question, but it was I think it was Ooh. the most requested question. Are you? Oh, ready? okay. Sure. Okay. So a, a little context. Um, and I've said it during this chat, but I'll explicitly say it. I did a chat with, um, Laura. I remember Laura. Yeah. I did a chat with Sunday and I did a chat with Jen all at the same time. And one, I think one of the most polarizing things that came out of that was their take on you versus Kara, as well as what they viewed as um, what they viewed as some of your actions in the house in regards to other um, other cast members, which to sum it up, they were like, they felt like you have moments where you were very um, antagonizing to other people, but when they saw it on the show, it seemed like the editing removes it all. So I go to the question that asks, this is Benny underscore L underscore H. When Oliver Twist interviewed Laura about Cycle 13, she claimed you bullied Kara. What is your take on the Kara situation? Yeah, um, I mean, looking back, I do remember feeling like very adversarial pretty much towards everyone. <laughs> Kind of like, um, I guess maybe adversarial is a strong world word, but like I, I didn't trust anyone and I definitely had an inflated sense of my own ego. And so um, I don't think that I saw myself as a bully, but looking back, if I did bully or malign somebody, like I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I... Um, yeah, I want to put it past myself. I have made many mistakes in my life, and um, it would not surprise me if, in the least if, um, you know, yeah. <laughs> so before I respond to that, I'm, um, I'm curious to know the motivations on why you felt like that was something you were doing out of um, whatever the response is. What motivated you to, to be that way, adversarial, to the other girls? Um, well, I, I think that, like, just the situation where I felt like, like I had to kind of compete and, um, you know, that maybe I my I wouldn't be accepted um, put me a little bit like on edge and feeling like like cons paranoid and concerned for myself that you know somebody would sabotage me or you know it was a competition so it it probably didn't bring out always bring out the best aspects of myself 
did you feel like the girls were doing anything, were doing things towards you that made you feel that way? Like, were they saying things? Were they reacting to you a certain way? What was your experience that placed you in that mindset? Um, well, I guess just because of the reputation of the show more so, mm -hmm. I, I expected drama and I expected friction. And so I kind of went into it with that in mind. Um, but what I actually found, especially over time as we were um, in that house longer, um, is that people were much nicer than I expected. Um, and so I think by the end of the show, I was able to put down a lot of my guard and probably, you know, reveal more positive aspects of myself and, you know, whatever um, friction was there coming from me, maybe um, loosened up, I felt at the end. But like, but yeah, in the beginning, just because of expectation, I definitely like had my haunches all up. You know, Nicole, I, I want to say, I hope everyone watching and that will watch can take note from this moment and what Miss Nicole just did for us. She took responsibility. She didn't blame it on anyone else. Um, and Nicole, what you just did was so, 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 so beautiful. I'm appreciative oh. of it. And I hope this was a great learning moment for everyone watching because it definitely was a learning moment for me on the verbiage that you use. I think... I, I think that was a, a great way to take accountability as well as explain where you were coming from which wasn't in a bad place but those are thank you so much for it i that was amazing thank you mm -hmm. i'd like to add that i was very insecure <laughs> um and you know those usually when you're insecure you see things from a different angle and you don't necessarily um, treat others as well as they deserve. Oh, that is amazing. Okay, listen, Dan Griefer is asking, ask her if she really went to school with the giant wheelbarrow or was that just a joke for airtime? <laughs> I was very proud of that. I wanted everybody to know for some reason. Um, so actually, I did the. I went to school one day with a wheelbarrow to actually clean out my messy locker at the end of the school year, but it wasn't like a daily thing. I'm, mm. I I could have misrepresented that, or maybe it was the editing. I don't know. But yeah, it was it was just a one time thing. It was a one time thing. Gotcha. How did you feel when the judges critiqued? critiqued you about being too much like a contortionist with all of your posing, and then during the Cirque du Soleil shoot, deemed your film too safe and boring after you tried to incorporate their critiques? Oh, yeah. Yeah, some of the critiques could be a little confusing because um, they all had their different angles. And, you know, sometimes what the photographer wanted was different than what the creative director wanted was different than what the judge wanted. Um, so I do remember getting confused and, you know, feeling like, oh, man, I can't listen to anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but as far as the contortionist thing, I remember thinking that sounded cool and I was kind of proud of it. <laughs> Someone else will, else wants to know, do you still have the clothes and jewelry that you received from the ghosty imposing challenges on the show? Absolutely. Actually, I got married um, a couple years ago, and the Congrats. dress I got um, from the ghosty challenge, I actually, or was it the ghosty challenge? It was a dress I won on the show. Um, I wore as my wedding dress. Which dress on the show? Um, it was a designer that I met through the Go See Challenge. Um, it was one of her dresses. And I want to say her name was like Rose or Rosalia. Um, darn it. I can't remember. The fans um, will put it down for us because they know. Okay. Yeah. Got to jog my memory. And so that dress you won, you wore that in your wedding. Oh, that's yes. so cute! Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> I also special. wore it to one of the judging panels. That is yeah. so special. How long have you been married? Um, I should know this. I'm really, so I'm really bad at, like, remembering anniversaries and important dates. My husband's really good at it. But I'm like, yeah, when was I married? Um, let's see. Um, Rose Nichols is the name. 
Oh, okay. Rose Nichols. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She was really nice and her designs were amazing. So I got one of her dresses and wore it. I guess I was married like three years ago. I think, I think something like that. <laughs> glorious. <laughs> glorious. Glorious. It was. Oh. It was like a fairy tale. One of the best okay. days of my life. Oh, don't make me cry. I can't wait till I get married one day. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, special. How did you feel about your in your international destination being Hawaii after the producers made the contestants get their passports on such a short notice? Sunday in our chat was like getting her passport was like this whole thing and it was like pressure to get it and then you guys never went abroad. Yeah, I just remember feeling like in general, I think I was so nervous being on the show. Well, you know, nervous isn't the right word. Like, everything felt, everything that happened on the show felt so unreal to me. And maybe that's just a function of it being, like, produced in a television show. But I was constantly, it felt like, and this translated too, I think, I was constantly walking in a, around in, like, a fog of disreality. Like, in this just constant state of like, all of this is so unreal. And so I actually like, I remember when it was revealed that we were going to Hawaii, um, I had to drum up some like reaction that I felt like I should have. But in general, I just felt like I was through the mists of like disreality or unreality. Um, and it was, it was hard to feel anything about anything that happened on the show. Yeah, it's just unreal. What were some of the things that you experienced while taping the show where you were like, this just is not real right now? Yeah, I guess like, like, I guess in moments where I felt like I needed to react or like show some kind of emotion, I just, it, oh, you know, a big one is like getting called, um, my name called you know, to be one of the 13 who was going to the house. Um, that was so unreal to me. <laughs> um, and I felt like in that moment, it was important that I react, but I just had nothing. It was just like, whoa, out of the stratosphere. Um, but yeah, like in any kind of moments where I felt like something just happened, Nicole, react. Like my body just did the opposite and I was just flatlined, like no emotion. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Going back to the international destination, guys watching right now, hold me accountable. I remember Sunday saying she believes why you guys didn't go somewhere like really international was because of budget. There was something up with the budget. Was it something that you were knowledgeable of? Um, I remember people saying that, but I don't know that it was true. I think it was like a rumor. It might have been true. Not sure. <laughs> John, um, John Ciceris wants to know, I've been dying to know about Miss J during her dance routine. Do you still think he overdid it? And how do you feel about the girls judging you about your ghosty win? Okay, so dance routine. Which one was that? Oh, Miss J judged the Hawaii dance routine. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, they, they did judge that. Um, you know, I just, like, my mindset was, like, I can't dance, but people are probably going to enjoy the fact that I can't dance. So I'm just not going to be cut through it right now and trying to have fun. Um, because I was worried that, like, I had been too cutthroat and too competitive, you know, so I wanted to tone it down a little. That was kind of my strategy. And I was like, everybody loves to see somebody dance badly. I'll just, you know just uh, flail. <laughs> um, but Miss J laughed. And so that was kind of that that was something I was hoping for. Or I thought he laughed. Somebody laughed. Um, I wasn't worried about Miss J, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who was your favorite judge on the show? Um, I mean, they were all great. Um, they all brought something different to to the equation, you know. Um, all different, you know, I felt like Tyra was the one that gunned for me the hardest and she was usually like in my corner. But then there was like, there were so many judges because they were the guests too. Mm -hmm. 
And I remember things like, um, you know, Kim K saying, no, keep the glasses. I like those. And then, you know, nice things like that. So, you know, they all added their own spice. That is so, you know, Nicole, you're doing such a great job right now. I hope you just know it. Oh. You're a great, awesome job. Awesome job. Okay. Thank you. On to what is probably one of the most polarizing, controversial moments of not only Cycle 13, but of all of Top Model. And I think with that opening, you know exactly what I'm about to ask you. On Cycle 13, there was a thing called the Hoppa Shoot. Oh, like so many other people want to know, what does Nicole think about the ethnicity swap photo shoot where the girls were in full blackface? This will be the second time this photo shoot has this type of photo shoot has taken place. I'm assuming they're referring back to cycle four with the Got Milk campaign. This moment is a big moment again. Like I said, not only for your cycle but just all the top model and people use that. Um, and their discourse about missteps that the show took. What were your thoughts currently in that moment when you were in Hawaii and you were seeing the creative taking place before you? Yeah, I mean, I remember it was an interesting um, experience because I remember, I think it was Jen who was looking at me and I was like, what? And I'm I'm in blackface. And she was like, you know, I interpret you and your silence differently now that you look different. And I was like, that was so profound to me. And, and it made me think like, you know, how we perceive different ethni ethnicities and personalities and appearances. Um, so it was educational to me um, also when articles came out afterwards saying like, oh my God, you know, they were in blackface and I never heard of blackface and I didn't know what it was. So I, you know, found out a great deal. Um, and that, and, you know, um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting experience. Um, just contemplating that and, you know, yeah, I guess I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> So, you know, listen, I'll be honest, as a Black person, as a Black person, and I've had what most would consider and agree that I've had a Black experience, me being young, and I'm, and again, when you girls were on TV, I wasn't, I wasn't even in high school yet. Like, I didn't get in high school until, like, cycle 20. Um, But watching it, I didn't, I didn't see anything wrong what, you know, with what was going on, and I was taken on the sentiments and the attitude that Tower had. Like, you know, this is a, this is about a celebration of culture. This is about a celebration of, you know, people, like, we're not making fun of them. It's not like... Um, That's true. It's not like the stereotypical blackface, like, jigaboo, you know, types of, like, we're, we're honoring this culture and people who look like this. That, that was my thoughts. But, like, once I saw that people were, you know, dissecting it, analyzing it, and saying why it was wrong, I was like, okay, yeah, I get it. So now that you, many years have passed, and like you said, many articles, videos have come out about it, what do you understand what was wrong about that photo shoot? Yeah, um, I guess, you know, even though it wasn't, wasn't intended to, like, make fun of other ethnicities, you still um, can't, like, appropriate you know, other ethnicities for, for an entertainment value. That just cheapens their lives and their identities. Um, yeah, and you don't, you don't know, you can't really know what it's like to embody another person's identity. And so pretending to do so, um, you know, doesn't do justice to that other ethnicity or that other person. I really like how you just put that. I really love how you put that. I think that's one of the most concise, most um, sensitive responses I've heard about that topic. Like, that was really good. Nicole, you're really good at this. Did you practice before you got on this with me? I'm winging it. <laughs> oh. beautiful, my brown ego eyes, just... beautiful brown eyes. Let me shout out my baby, beautiful brown eyes. I freaking love you. I pulled a lot of your questions. Thank you so yeah. much for asking good questions. I've been shouting you out, like, the whole time. Beautiful Brown Eyes wants to know, love Nicole, what was it like working with the Jays? Do you, 
do they just edit it to make Mr. J look like a certain way, or is he really that much of a diva? We're talking about J. Manuel, <laughs> the, 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 the great mother, the house of Manuel, J. <laughs> oh my goodness um yeah he is uh very um performative you know he's a performer um and he's funny and um you know i just flash back to walking past him meeting him when i was living in la and you know just seeing him walk walking down the street you know and um, he has a certain presence about himself that, you know, is always kind of there. He, um, you know, he teaches how to have that presence and how to, you know, walk with confidence and he embodies that. Um, so yeah, he is like not your typical kind of person. Um, but you know, that's great. And what was the other part of the question? Did I answer that? No, you did. Okay, cool. Yeah, you did. You answered part of it earlier. Um, what was going on in your brain when you found out that the top four would go to the top two? It was you, Laura, Aaron, and Jen. I honestly didn't know who they were going to put through. Like, I think this is one of the top model fans watching right now. Sound off in the comments. I think like me and so many other people, we did not know who honestly yeah. was going to advance because it could have been anybody. Yeah, I felt like when that was announced that the intensity just kind of went up. And, you know, I remember being like, wow, I'm starting to really care about this. Stop caring. Don't care. If you care too much, you're going to lose it. That was kind of my general thought going through it. So I was like, okay, Nicole, like if you, you just bring it down a notch <laughs> and, um, you know, don't get too invested in the outcome you know there are a lot of questions that i didn't put in but i hope you guys watching can see nicole miss nicole really was i'm feeling and disagree with me or agree with me that you really had a strategy throughout this whole entire thing where you were very self-reflective and you took all things into consideration and then you developed a game plan that you were going to go with that would give you what you believe to be the best result yeah yeah, um, I was pretty competitive. Yeah, I like to win. <laughs> this is really, you know, I, I'm, I'm very happy at this other side I'm seeing of you and you explaining yourself on this show. And not, and not saying that I thought you were this bad person. No, I thought you were sweet as pie and everyone was bothering you. You were just fabulous. But to hear that there, you know, these methodical things and these self-reflective things, <laughs> and even you being vulnerable in um, disclosing these, um, these, you know, these dark moments you have with yourself and feeling insecure, it's really fleshing you out. To the people, listen, I'm sorry, Nicole, give me one second. To the people, if you do top model again, if it's relaunched, and when I'm sitting on the far left on the judge judging table, I really want the editors and the producers to give us full-fledged, wholesome character profiles. Mm. Please do that, because there is a beauty yeah. about people just being human. We all have good days. We all have yeah. bad days. But we all have our motivations and reasons and our experiences that have formed our actions on why we do what we do and it's a beauty to see the full human and I am very grateful of this chat right now because your responses are very it's just it, 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 it fleshes you out so much more good good yeah yeah and I think that like it's easy when sometimes when we I studied some psychology and um you know, I don't remember the name of the bias, but there's a bias that we often carry that when we look at people outside of ourselves, we think that their actions are a direct result of their characters. But when we look at ourselves, we think that our actions are motivated by our circumstances. And so I think when you show the full person, you see more of the circumstance and, the, and you know, as you're saying, the other dimensions, the, the real person um and that is a beautiful thing 
Nicole, just so people watching can catch it again, can you repeat that sentence you said? Because it was so beautifully said about, and I know you, you said you can't, you can't name the term for it, but can you describe the term again so that for those of us oh. like me who are going to Google it afterwards, we can hear it again. Okay, first of all, I want to qualify that I'm not a psychologist and I've studied at the, you know, level of the undergraduate um, BA, but um, so I don't want to sound like too highfalutin or whatever that, you know, I'm bragging. Anyway, there is a bias out there that um, a lot of people carry um, unconsciously that when we look at another person outside of ourselves, we um, see their choices and actions as a direct result of their characters. But when we look at ourselves, we look at our choices and our actions as a direct result of our circumstances. circumstances. We give ourselves the benefit of the doubt, but not others. Um, but so long as you know that, you can change that habit and see other people, you know, the way you see yourself more honestly. So I see people down in the comment section saying um, implicit bias. And I um, went to college, like I say all the time, and I wanted to say implicit bias, but I didn't want to be wrong. Yeah. So thank you, guys. It's implicit bias where, again, we, we view things that, whatever you said, I'm not going to go into it. Thank you for saying that, though. Like, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it it was really cool to learn because now I can correct that, you know, tendency in myself. So Apple underscore heart 91 is saying some questions. You said in a press interview that when you were in class, Tyra called you to say she was happy you won. Can you discuss more of this, please? How did it feel, first of all, to win? And how did it feel to get that phone call from Tyra saying she was happy you won? That was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a little bit unreal still to me. Um, but, um, I think I like ran out of that class and <laughs> in the middle of the lecture, it's like, Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah. Um, I guess, um, what was the rest of the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, well, my personal question was, how, how did you feel to win? Like, did you feel like you were um, going to win? And then what was the moment like when they called your name? Is like, when Ty was like, you're the winner. I, um, I was like already kind of thinking in my head, okay, what's next? You know, like this could be, um, a challenge. I wasn't ready to celebrate really because I was like, this is going to change my life. This is going to have real re repercussions, you know. How am I going to take the responsibility that I now have that everybody has placed on me with their hopes and dreams to be a good role model or to be a successful model? And, um, you know, how is my life going to change? Um, so I was, I guess I was a little, like, pensive, pensive in that moment. Gotcha. You're very self-reflective. Yeah. Does your brain I hurt? So. <laughs> I overthink a lot of things, mm -hmm. like every day. <laughs> but I think that's such a I think, I think that's such a great thing, though, that you have these discussions with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it can be. Okay. <laughs> so this is when we this is when we step into your post hot model career. A lot of detailed questions about what you were doing once you won. And I'm just gonna jump right into it. Hannibal underscore Hector wants to know. Here's a question. I absolutely I absolutely love you all season and always thought finally the awkward quiet girl wins. So when I looked up and saw you were in the film Ashley, I decided to watch and I was shocked to see you fully nude. It seems so crazy because you look so confident and comfortable. Did, do you, do you plan on pursuing acting again, excuse me, because I felt like you had something special? Oh, that's nice. Um, you know, I did acting for a while, maybe just a few years. Um, and then I kind of realized about myself is that, um, like, I'm not a performer. You know, I'm naturally, like, very anxious in front of crowds, as you can tell from, you know, our earlier conversation. Um, and there are some people who thrive um, in the spotlight. 
and they're really able to do some of their best work and access flow states um, and perform, you know, their peak performers and in flow when they're in front of people. And I just always felt handicapped in front of people. Like I couldn't quite get there. So I decided to make peace with that and just pursue avenues that like suited my temperament more. I'm very blown away right now. Um, and I'll tell you why later. Okay, while Lagunas wants to know, question for Nicole, what's your personal opinion on this Cycles photo shoot? What was your favorite photo shoot and what was your least favorite photo shoot? Oh, um, Underwater was my favorite. That's, you know, um, just uh, mainly because I was so terrified to go under the water and like I had a total panic attack on the way down with a scuba diver and like was like, clawing for the surface of the water <laughs> desperately so freaked out but then I kind of like chilled it out and was able to go down to the bottom and I felt so proud of myself for being able to do that <laughs> yes so much fear underneath those poses you have no idea <laughs> Nicole you know I'm not saying this because you're on the line with me but you have one of my favorite portfolios of all the winners. Let me tell you something. That photo of you, my personal, my your your a photo you took on the cycle that's my personal favorite was when you guys had to do that challenge in that warehouse and you guys had to make yourselves look tall and you were in that mm -hmm. that white dress and you're like, I don't know what is it about that photo and your hair and all of it that just makes me so like happy even your um the scarf the 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 fabric photo i like you have one of the most stellar most foolproof portfolios of that show i like the scarf one but i think my hand is a little too close to my crotch so i've always felt that way about that picture <laughs> But like this, you know, upper, the upper half of it's good. <laughs> Nicole, did you know you were badass? Be honest. I'm pretty bad. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> did it on him. Man, I just did it. Okay, listen. Uh, <laughs> um, Jay Kabarski is asking, ask her about being in the movie, in the tw 2014 movie, Girl House. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all right now. So when I was seeing this down in the comments, my brain kept thinking Grindhouse. And for those of you, <laughs> and for those of you who know what Grindhouse is, Grindhouse was that Quentin Tarantino, that Quentin Tarantino movie that was like two movies in one with Rose McGowan, who's one of my favorite actresses I love. If people know Charm is my number one favorite show of all time. Top Models, number two. And I was like, when was Nicole in Grindhouse? So I'm like Googling <laughs> Nicole in Grindhouse. I'm like, I can't find it. And then I was like, no, you idiot. You're reading Grindhouse, but it says Girl House. I just wanted to tell that story. <laughs> So there's yeah. saying, um a lot of questions a lot of questions about Girl House. I I'll start over again. Ask her about being in the movie Girl House. Gags was such a fun movie, but made me feel like her true personality wasn't portrayed on the show, and maybe she just didn't chill. So what was it about the movie Girl House that you think um, fans liked you in that movie so much? Fans liked me in Girl House. I wasn't aware of that. No, there's um, a lot of questions about you in Girl House. A lot of yeah. questions. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah, it was a. It was a cool shoot. We, I got to go to Canada for the first time, and it was super beautiful there. Um, I played a really small role in it, though. Um, yeah, just, you know, got murdered all in a day's work. Um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't a major character in that movie, so I'm surprised so many people are interested. But I think it was produced fairly, fairly well, and it did well in its um, release in festivals. So... Um, to be honest, I have not seen the movie, so it's hard for me to say, you know, I just, I can't watch myself. I, I used to force myself to watch the movies, but it's just too weird. So yeah, I can't it. watch myself. So Princess Eric 
I love that. Whoever Princess Eric is, I love that. Princess Eric, I love that. <laughs> I remember I remember there was this rumor that Alexander McQueen was wanting to work with Nicole, but didn't. Can she say, can she shed more light on this? Oh, I wish. Oh my gosh. Alexander McQueen, one of my favorite designers. But um, you know, maybe the rumor stemmed from me talking about how much I loved him and then, you know, went from there, but as far as I know, it's only fiction, sadly. So, so he never reached out to you. Is that that's what you said? He saying? never did. God. Yeah. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. Um, BC215, question for Nicole. What was your experience after the show finale when you appeared on live with Regis and Kelly? Many top model winners have spoken out about the lack of support they had from the show when it came to making public appearances and promoting the show slash cover girl after the finale? Oh, um, I felt that there was a lot of people involved in all of that. Um, you know, my mom was there with me. <laughs> Number one support. Um, you know, I don't know what I would have done without her. <laughs> but um, she was kind of helping me through all of the interviews and getting from place to place. And, and I had the best hairstylist, too. Um, a hairstylist out of New York who was there, like, cheering from the sidelines. Um, I, I think it's, like, Gianelli Salon. Um, and I believe that was his last name, but he was fantastic. Um, yeah, we had just my mom and the hairstylist and people we met along the way, but um, it was a fun little adventure and I, I didn't feel that there was a lack of support. Dope. So if, if you could sum up in a couple of sentences, what was your experience like with um, the production of the show? Like the producers, the people that sit in the offices, like Ken Mock, what were your experiences like working with those individuals? Um, well, there was there was a lot of distance between me and them. Um, some of them I got to know after the show, but at least while we were on the show, there was, you know, like the fourth wall and nobody was allowed to really, um, you know, interfere with our little bubble. So, um, you know, that kind of stayed sacred. Dope. Nice to hear that. Um, and I will be remiss if I didn't ask because it, it's come up in other in other um chats that I've done with former top model contestants. Did you at all, and if it's a no, that's totally fine. Did you at all feel like there was any manipulation from production um on the experiences that you had while filming Cycle 13? Um, the only thing, well, let me make sure I answer this thoroughly. I'm thinking. Um, the only thing that they let us know that altered things a bit is that we had to be somewhat on. You know, they, they discourage things like curling up in your bed with a book, um, which that would have been me. <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, no. <laughs> um, you know, and they encouraged us to be on camera and to communicate and to communicate our thoughts to a level that maybe we don't normally um, in order for the audience to know what was going on in our minds. So they wanted us to speak our minds, you know. Um, so in that way, it was more of an elevated reality and it was a bit... Um, you know, manipulated, but, but other than that, I, I can't really remember any instances of interference. Thank you for that. And so, um, Queen Claus underscore wants to know, have you met any former contestants or winners of Top Model? Oh, um, Contestants or winners. Um, yeah, I remember having this, like, I don't remember who it was, but I met somebody randomly that I knew was a top model winner. And I was like, okay, so, like, I'm doing what is always done to me, which always feels a little bit jarring, but I'm going to go up to you and be so excited to meet you right now. <laughs> and, like, but really, like, I understand how you feel, too, because this has happened to me. No, really. And I, for some reason, felt like I needed to justify that. Um, but it was a funny moment. Um, and then, other than that, um, 
you know, I was a guest on her cycle, so I had met her while filming. But Raina, I tended to run into all over the place when we both lived. Well, I lived in L.A., and she came there to audition at the very least. Um, so we always showed up at the same auditions. Gotcha. Okay. And Ami, um, I hate you guys' screen names with a passion. <laughs> um is so British is I cannot take credit for this question. I saw it on YouTube, but it was such an it was it was such an interesting question. I, I'm assuming they meant to type that I feel the need to ask again. The question was like Nicole did a cover girl eyewear campaign after the show that I saw. Like I saw that and I saw that. Um was this campaign part of your top model contract that you won, or did CoverGirl rehire you? She is the only winner I have ever seen with like a real cover girl print that isn't the one they shoot on the show, which I'm going to correct you. Danielle Evans, that was her name at the time. She also had other cover girl um, shoots and commercials too. But was that eyewear commercial that you did for them a part of your package or did they rehire you again? Um, I remember we did a number of different shoots. There's like the one where we did uh, the commercial with Queen Latifah and there was the one that was like showed up in Target um, and there was one that was, you know, just for magazines. I think the majority of it fell under my initial contract and I don't want to speak wrong, but I think I was rebooked and renewed for another contract. If I remember correctly, they may have just been talking about it and it didn't happen, but we at least talked about it. Maybe it happened. I can't quite remember. Um, but yeah, we did a number of shoots and, you know, I had heard that they might not use me for anything. So I was, you know, really happy that they did. Why? Um, I guess that was just, you know, people, I read things from the fans that were like, yeah, we never see, you know, ads from these girls for cover girl afterwards. You know, they just disappear. And I was like, dang, I don't want that to happen. Well, I remember seeing your eyewear. Um, I, I, I vividly remember you wearing glasses. Like, I remember seeing that at multiple places. Yeah, okay, so the eyewear was under my initial contract because that, that happened pretty close, pretty soon after Top Model wrapped up. Okay, gotcha. So and I think that was the person's question. Did, did that ad fall underneath your initial contract? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to get into that because we've already hit an hour and I need to get into the other questions. I'm not going to get into okay. that. Okay, so I'm done with all of my questions. This is the point where I turn it over to the fans and everybody who's gotten a badge, I'm not going to ask your questions. I'm going to sound your names off so we can get to this very quickly. Bandy underscore plates 83, thank you so much. And Bandy 2020, Torin W, Dot Rashid, Sear Bad, Beautiful Brown Eyes, all blah. Neon Black Music, as always, and Looky Lou. And I'm looking for your questions. How do you feel? Me? Yes. <laughs> Are you talking to somebody else? No. Um, I feel better. You're really good at interviewing because I feel comfortable, and that's rare for me. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So Aaron Banning 22 wants to know, hey, Nicole, any behind the scenes dirt on the Walmart challenge where Aaron was pushing through people? What are your thoughts on that challenge? Aaron played no games. She was like, bitches, move the fuck out of the way. <laughs> she was fast. Um, I just remember being like, man, I want to win this, but I always suck at PE in school, so I don't think I'm very fast. I tried, but I was like, ugh, no, I'm slow. <laughs> gotcha. Betty underscore plates underscore 83. Are you glad that you didn't shave your head on the makeover on, on makeovers now? Oh, am I glad I didn't? That's a random question. Um, I like it, but shave my head. I actually have come very close in my adult life to shaving my own head, so I'm really not opposed to it. Really? How'd you, how'd you feel about makeovers your season? Um, I thought everybody looked great. Yeah. Um, I thought they were subtle, maybe more subtle than they were in other seasons. And um, for the most part, I agreed with, you know, the transformations. So, 
Gothiana underscore BB is asking, how was your experience in New Zealand, especially when Angeli asked about how you dealt with drama? Remember, you came back for the Cycle 14 um, final runway in um, New Zealand. Yeah, I remember I kind of had a chip on my shoulder. Like, I felt like I had been critiqued a lot in my season, and I wanted to come back and, like, prove everybody that I wasn't who they thought I was. Like, like Mr. J and Miss J and, you know, the whole production. So I remember, like, being really, like, um, outgoing, you know, and just – pushing the limit of, you know, how big I could act just because I kind of had that chip on my shoulder because I was, you know, critiqued a bit for being too quiet and for, you know, my stoner voice and such. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of show them that I could be like what they all wanted, which was a bubbly, big personality. At least that's, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought they wanted. Um, so, you know, if I were to do that over now with what I know now, I wouldn't have, you know, done that. But at the time, I did. You felt like you did. Did that answer your question? Um, the question was about when you went to New Zealand and they asked you about um, drama. So you answered it, but um, talk about mm. I guess just being there with the Cycle 14 girls, just so nobody's upset with me. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I remember it just, it felt a little bit funky to me because I still wasn't comfortable on camera and like it was like oh my gosh okay now say something supportive or insightful go you know and then um it was I, I I did my best but like we didn't really interact much off camera they just kind of like shuttled me in okay here we go one two three we're on camera and then make it count you know mm, I know that feeling Kemp underscore Soren is asking, was there a photo shoot where she felt like her best photo wasn't chosen? She slayed the, vo the volcano shoot too hard for that to be her best shot. Love mm. you, Nicole. All-time favorite. His favorite. Aww. Yeah. Um, I didn't suspect any funny business with the, you know, selection of our photos. I was just kind of like, okay, I guess that was my best. Um, I didn't suspect anything like later on I heard rumors from fans that that they don't necessarily pick the best um which I don't know if that's true or not um but yeah actually I'm not surprised with that one because I did struggle a bit in that particular photo shoot with like I felt like I was getting mixed messages from um, Mr. J and the photographer, Mr. J was wanting to play up like the volcano goddess aspect and fierce and powerful moves, you know, mm -hmm. and then the photographer was like, you know, be feminine, be flowing, be delicate, be beautiful. And I was like, I don't know how to be both of these at the same time. So I kind of just stood there confused, you know, so that might have been my best. <laughs> gotcha. Maino Darashid is asking, I heard a rumor Nicole worked with Steve and Mizell. Was that true? And if so, how was the experience? Steve and Mizell. That sounds really familiar. <laughs> I, I love, I love your memory right now. I absolutely love it. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Showing my age. It's um, okay. <laughs> Steven Mizell, I sound super familiar. Um, I wonder if he shot for CoverGirl or something. It might have been a CoverGirl shoot. Um, yeah, it could be. Not I'm, I'm sorry. My, no, you're fine. I'm looking for the people who got badges to make sure I ask their questions. To make sure. To make sure. Gonna shout these names out one more time. Gothian, I got yours. Kim, Bandy Place. I don't know if I saw yours. In in Bandy, I saw yours. Torn W Maino, I got you. Sear Bad, Beautiful Brown Eyes, My Baby, Neon Black Music, and Lucky Lou. Um, yeah, ask for questions, guys. I'm so happy that Lipton is is in surgery. I'm so happy. That makes me so happy. 
Yeah, poor little guy. This morning we were noticing that when he eats, like he just kind of like lets some food fall out of his mouth because I think he's like really tender in around those two teeth. So, um, yeah, it'll be really nice to see him, you know, recovering here soon. Surgery tomorrow. So, how, how old is Lipton? Um, I got him when he was two months old. Um, that was back in like two thousand. 16, so 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. He's like almost five years old. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He has a little bit more time to go. So, yeah, we gonna, I'm glad we're getting him straight. Sierra yeah. Bell wants to know, Nicole, what inspires your paintings? Do you have any favorite artists? Um, ooh, I have a lot of artists I love. Like, I like a lot of artists that, um, well, I like artists like, how, who have are what do you mean um ah what do you mean um i guess like uh, visual artists. oh not you i'm talking to myself oh. what do you mean nicole <laughs> just arguing with myself and the voices in my head <laughs> um i like you know i generally like artists from art history but i'm noticing that like with instagram now i see so many artists from around the world that i have access to their work now and they're just blowing past um the accomplishments of history um with you know all the media that's available to us now all the photo references people like photo realism and painting is so big right now um and nobody's really been able to do it to the extent that like modern artists are so mm -hmm. i follow a lot of different artists um um yeah like i emulate different aspects of their work um historical artists i like are like edward munch i've always really loved his work um and pierre bonnard um the french impressionist um french impressionism yeah oh fragonard i think he's more romantic than impressionistic um but he's another frenchie i really like um i actually got to see his you know seminal piece the swing in in real life um at the denver art museum and it was just amazing another artist that i only grew to like through seeing him in his work in person was Monet. I actually always felt that Monet's work was kind of drab and unremarkable, but seeing one of his enormous water lily paintings up close in real life and seeing how the light bounced off it and how the textures, you know, were, were just so descriptive. Um, yeah, I was out of this world. No. Oh. And Bandy2020 wants to know, have you kept with have you kept in touch with any of the girls from your cycle? Um, you know, no, I haven't. That's actually not really a strength I have. I, it's been something I've been working on in recent times. But, like, there was a good period of my life where I was going through various things like depression and anxiety and, you know, struggling with mental illness where I was just, like, really kept to myself and just, like, had no idea how to talk to other people. So... Um, I didn't stay in touch with anybody, and that's been something I've been, you know, I've been trying to reconnect in um, recent years. Um, beautiful brown eyes wants to know: was there was there any awkwardness between Jay and Tyra off camera, being after the fallout? Cycle thirteen was like after their big fallout. Did you notice any of that? Um, I didn't notice anything like that. Um, no, not at all. Mayno Rashid wants to know how was all the wind and elements during the final runway? Yeah, it was slippery. <laughs> the I wind bet. was okay. But yeah, the rain was like I remember the real issue for me is they didn't have my shoe size. So I have like size seven feet and I was wearing size nine high heels. And like they tried to tape my feet in to keep them like sticking but then when it got wet like it was like masking tape and it didn't really work so i was like super struggling dope no joke um shout out to everybody who got a badge thank you so much i did get to all of your questions i made sure thank you guys so much thank you guys so much thank you guys so much nicole is there anything else you want to talk about regarding cycle 13 of america's next top model you gave us a very holistic chat about this is there anything else you want to add Oh, um, 
you know, I guess I'm that I'm grateful for the experience. And I really learned a lot. And there's so much that I got to do and learn about myself. And um, that I, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do otherwise. So, um, you know, thank you for the continued support from all my fans for, you know, the GoFundMe for Lipton, you know, making his recovery a possibility and um, for this awesome conversation and your great questions. Oh, thank you. Um, if you could talk to Tara in 2021, you were standing like right in front of her face to face. What would you say to her? Um, thank you from the bottom of my heart for, you know, extending this great opportunity um, to like, you know, come into her world um, to just, you know, a random gaggle of unknown girls that, you know, we aren't family, we aren't um, anybody that, I don't know. Yeah, just thank you. Um, yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you for that. Uh, before I let you go, you paint. Do you sell your art? And if you do sell your art, where can they find it? Um, yeah, it's developing. I'm not selling too much right now just because I'm trying to develop my craft. But um, right now, um, like, sometimes people reach out to me. And if the project is right, I will take it um, for a commission. Um, so there's that. You can always reach out to me via Instagram. You can follow my website. Um, I have an art show, a solo, sh well, my senior art show. I don't think it's technically solo, um, coming out in May. Um, so I'll be posting about that on my website and, you know, more of my process on Instagram. But, um, yeah, right now I'm not so focused on selling, just kind of like getting better, you know? No, don't, don't. Well, listen, Nicole. I don't have any more questions for you. They don't have any more questions for you. I thank you so much for this experience and this time. Um, and you taking the time to talk to me and my friends here about Cycle 13, a top model. You did an amazing job. You too. You did an amazing job. And I'm so happy that I was able to bring you to your first Instagram live. <laughs> It was not terrible. It was actually really great. So thank you. You know, maybe you can go, maybe like on your own channel, you can go live and play music and show people your painting process. Perhaps. It's an idea. It. Yes. Yeah. Everyone loves your painting. So like, and I think they want to see more and that may be cool for you. You never know what it can turn into. Yeah. Thank you, Oliver. You're thank so you. Welcome. No, thank you. Listen, guys. I want you guys to send kisses and hugs and all the great things I asked you guys to do as we wave goodbye to Nicole for giving us an amazing ATM Twix exclusive chat on Cycle 13. I'm back in this Nicole, thank you once again and enjoy your day. And I'm sending prayers up for Miss. Is, is your cat a female? I didn't ask your cat was a female or male. Uh, male. Lipton. Mail. Lipton mail. Lipton's Lipton. tea. I'm sending praise up for Mr. Lipton Thank that you. everything goes great. Please update me so I can update them on how the surgery goes. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Oliver. No, you're so welcome. Bye. Bye. That was freaking amazing, guys. Listen, I'm not going to hold you guys. Thank you. Ah! Damn it. See, okay, let me tell y'all something. I was sitting over here thinking, how much of this drink can I drink before I start biting my tongue and teeth? Because y'all know once I get into my cup real heavy, I start stuttering all that stuff. And it just happened as I was ending. My boyfriend is standing to the left of me. He wants me to get off so we can have a great time today, everyone. The Huns. Listen, I thank you guys so much for watching. Happy New Year. I'm so glad you guys have returned. We have so many more top model chats to get through. I love you guys. Be encouraged. Be inspired. Get up and go do something. It's the top of the year. It's now the perfect time for you to manifest all the great things in your life that you want to see. And Oliver Twist is telling you, bitch, I did it and it happened for me. So you get your lazy ass up right now. Make happen. Y'all see my panties? So this is why I really got to start wearing underwear. Because sometimes, you know, some of my chats, I was a little, you know, a little, a little, what's the word I want to use? A little vacant in undergarments on the underneath and i'm like girl if this camera opens up my everything is shut down and the fact i'm just over here twisting and turning like this and it's like girl y'all can see my pants anyways let me get off listen this video will be uploaded <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend over here fucking
second with me. Okay, listen. This video will be uploaded on YouTube later. That's the Oliver Twix YouTube channel. I love you guys. Be sure to pray in Kegel because um, after I get off this live, I'm going to see how my Kegeling skills have gone. <laughs> Bye, y'all.